everybody. Good afternoon. I'm Linda. Uh, Pinky Moss sister's in the kitchen, and uh, Mary's at home, but she's on the other end watching, and I believe uh, Carla's also watching. So thank y'all both for watching. Um, I uh, was on a phone call, so I'm, uh, it took me a little while to get on here, but um, I'm going to just be doing a few things with this cake. Um, I'm working on Brayden's cake, and thank y'all all for joining me. I wanted to just kind of uh, go over a few things here. Um, for those of you who are bakers who bake cakes, whether it's professionally or uh, if you do it as a hobby or if you just do it for your family, um, there's several different kinds of cake circles that you can use. Uh, these are just a cardboard. And I remember when Mama and Aunt Elsie uh, used to have Uncle J.D. cut these out of boxes uh, and make circles out of them. Of course, you can buy them if you're in, really into serious bacon. You can buy these by the case. Or you can buy them small packages at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I don't put Crisco in my buttercream. I make it with butter. But if you use Crisco in your buttercream, if you use this cardboard board to put your cake on, it's going to have grease spots on it. And it will seep out. So your cake is right here in the middle, and then uh, this edge is going to have grease marks on it, and it's, and it's kind of ugly looking. I don't like it, and I quit using the cardboard ones other than, like, if I wanted to stack cakes and wrap them to put them in the freezer, I'll use them for that. But I just want to show you the difference. Now, these here, are, these are from Hobby Lobby, and it's the uh, Sunny Side Up brand. You can get these in different sizes. This is an 8 inch and um, this is a 10 inch here. You can get them bigger and you can get the 6 inch. Um, these are plastic. They're wonderful. Um, they are not cheap, but you always buy them when it's, when it's on sale for half price, which helps a little bit. These are $5.99 for three, but if you get them half price, they're a dollar a piece. To me, they're worth it because you don't have to worry about that uh, uh, ugly looking grease or smidge or, sm or smudge or something on there um, and so this is what I use now if you want to know how strong these are you can take a pair of scissors which I don't think you'll want to cut up one but uh, they're very hard to cut even with sharp scissors they're very hard to cut so these hold really good and um, so I got my little cake decorating uh, turntable here and another thing that you're going to want if you're making a big cake, and when I say big, like I would say three layers or bigger, or if you're doing a tear cake, you want some straws. Some people call these bubble straws. This actually, the name of this is actually milkshake straws. Um, I bought them where they're colored. I like the clear ones because if um, you're doing a colored steam cake or a colored theme cake, you might not have the right color straws to put in them and to match. So I like the clear ones and that's what I use. And um, these are happen to be individually wrapped. It's just the ones that I ordered last time were. Uh, most of the time they're in bulk and they're not individually wrapped. But I want to show those to you. So um, I've got my buttercream made and what I'm going to do here, these are very old tools here. These are Wilton. I've had these for ages. You can tell the handles on here. <laughs> they are so worn. Um, you can't even buy this particular one anymore. There's another one kind of like this, but um, I use these. These are my favorite uh, offset spatulas that I use. And you want to put a little bit of uh, buttercream on your cake board here just so your cake will not um, slide <laughs> so uh, what I did is I made a double a double batch of um, almond cake and then I colored it so I'm going to do and I, I did one layer in red one layer in blue and then this one I did the leftover batter in um, the bottom's blue and the top's red. So I'm going to put the blue one on the bottom. I also made some simple syrup. 
and I've brushed these with simple syrup. So um, you can tell these are bigger than a regular cake pan because they're uh, Fat Daddy O and they're three inch pans. Um, so I use a, just a real thin cake tester like your pepper chip or Tico or whatever kind you want you have. You don't want to use a big one, you want to use a fine one. And then um, just take a pastry brush and brush the tops of them with simple syrup. This particular simple syrup that I made is has almond flavor in it because the cake is almond flavor. So um, the cakes were not cold when I brushed them, but they were not hot either. Now there's some cakes that I do that um, you want to put a glaze on them when they're hot so it soaks down in the cake. But I let these cool a little bit before I before I uh, put the simple syrup on. Now I'm going to put a board under here just so it doesn't um, get on my, these are washable, this is just, this is just shelf paper here. Uh, the first turn uh, turntable that I used for, to decorate cakes on, it was a Lacey Susan and I bought it at the Goodwill and it was wood. Uh, I used it for years. It was uh, bigger in diameter than this one. But this is an Atiko. Uh, I think I told y'all before that my sister bought this for me a long time ago. But um, you can use any shelf paper and just cut you a circle and put it on top of it. And then you just throw it in, the, in the, your dishwasher washer, or water. I don't think it's dishwasher safe, but throw it in your dishwater and wash this out and they dry real quick. This keeps that from sliding. So this is just uh, plain buttercream. I beat the butter a long time so I could get it to a, a paler color and not have a, a big yellow tint on it. So um, I read something, you know, you're always reading something in your news feed uh, yesterday. It was kind of comical. And it, um, you know, how they're always telling you, you know, something draw, drawing your attention to uh, read the article. You know, that that's that's how they get you to read it. Um, and it was about the ingredient, the secret ingredient, or the ingredient that takes buttercream to another level. Of course, I had to read it. And what did it say that ingredient was? Can any of y'all guess? I've been, I've been putting flake sea salt in my buttercream for years. Now, they didn't say flake, they just said salt. But buttercream is sweet, or at least what I make it is. And um, that salt just kind of cuts down on the sweetness, and it just kind of umps up the level uh, to make it taste a little bit better. So a lot of people frost their sides first. I don't. I frost the top first. And then uh, this is a real spreadable uh, buttercream. It's not, it's not real sit stiff. And this buttercream uh, will crust. And what that means is once it's set, you can touch it and it's not going to come off on your hand. Now, if you put Cairo or something in it that are, or use a recipe that is, it's um, probably would be called creamy. I know Wilton sells a tub of buttercream in the store. I think you can get it at Michael's or Walmart. And you can see it says on there creamy it will not crest if it says creamy it will not set i like the kind that sets and um when you're doing cakes you want to do what they call a crumb coat first and that's basically just putting uh your first coat of icing around the cake and i'm probably putting a little bit more on this than you would normally put on a crumb coat and i'll probably take some of it off. You can always take some of it off with um, with your spatula. But once this sets, you can see how I'm taking part of that off. Once it sets, you can put your next layer on there. Now, you can also, especially if you're putting a filling in the middle, I'm not going to put a filling in the middle of this, but you could put some in a piping bag just cut the tip off of it. You don't even need a, a, a tip in it. And just squeeze your round like a little uh, little edge. 
and then you could put something in the middle of that which would be a filling but you need a you need an edge on it so it doesn't fall and come out the layers of the cake okay so that that's all i'm going to do with that one and then i'm going to now um, I'm going to, after I get these three layers on here, I'm going to let this set a little bit. We're going to do something else. But um, I'm going to put this one in the, I don't want this, no, I want the red in the middle. I don't want that in the middle, I want the red in the middle. And everybody has different ways of put, stacking their cakes. This is how I stack mine. If you um, want to turn yours upside down, you can. If you do turn it upside down, you're going to need to run, a, um, uh, using a piping bag, you're going to need to run a, a layer of icing around, frosting around there, because there's going to be a gap in it. So, um, just FYI on that, if you decide to do it like that. Okay, now this is going to be a tall cake. Y'all see that it will. Um, and I won't put the straw in it until I get that top layer on it. So when you're making a cake this big, you need those straws to keep it from sliding. And especially if it's hot weather. And when I say hot weather, I've done wedding cakes when it was 80 degrees outside and the cakes, um, they will slide if it's not set in the refrigerator and um, it's real cold. You take it out in an open air venue when it's 80 degrees, we're going to have some trouble. Trust me, I know. Okay. I'm just going to put a little bit on here. And we call this crumb coating for a reason. You'll see that that's got a little bit of red up there uh, from the layer cake, from the layer, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to cover that over again anyway. And I'm going to put that other layer on here and we're going to let this set and then I'm going to show you some of the other things that I've done here. I use almond, real almond extract. I don't like anything that's artificial, any kind of extracts. They'll have a metallic taste or it's just, it's just not, if you could, if you can, uh, use the real extract, you're much, much better off. And if you can't, well, uh, use what you have. But um, I would definitely um, want to use the real extract if, if at all possible. Okay, so this is my third layer. I didn't measure this batter. I just kind of eyeballed it. But I think I pretty much got my layers, maybe one of them, maybe just a little bit smaller than the other. But I don't think it's, there's a whole lot of difference in it. See, that's a tall cake. This is um, six inches, I believe. Um, so you'll see that this is close to seven inches and it had not the rest of the frosting on it. When I sold cakes and baked for the public, uh, my cake boxes, I had window cake boxes and they were eight inches tall. Now you could get them taller, but the eight inch ones were was the ones that I used. And you had to have it if you had a cake this big, whoops, I knew that was gonna happen, but that's okay. I'll pick that up and get that out of the way. Um, this is all, like I said, this is washable, so not to fret. And I'm using the um, cardboard. I'll just throw that away when I get through with it. And I forgot to put the straws in. So I need to do that. This cake smells so good. I do that for the months before I think, but I know where this cake's going, so. Mm, that's good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut these to make sure that um, that they, they fit. And what you want to do, because this cake will settle, 
you want to do it a little bit shorter than what you want them because if you don't, you get up in the morning, the cake, that straw is going to be above the cake. So, um, I have edible pens, but I don't have one of them in here, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball this to cut these. And I'm going to use two. You can use three if you want to. But you'll see that's below that cake line, and that's where I want it. So I'm just going to push these in here. Push them down far enough to where they're not on top. Now, you might think that this will dry the cake out, but it's not because I'm going to I'm going to put some more icing over those holes. So it's not going to dry it out. Now, what I would do, and I'm not going to put this in the refrigerator right now because I didn't I didn't even um, get a place ready for it. When you're when you're making cakes and selling them or making them for a special occasion, um, first thing you want to do is make sure you've got a place in your refrigerator because especially if it's hot, they need to sit in the refrigerator and get real cold. And um, that way, when you're doing more decorating, you're working with a cold cake. Because the longer they set out, the warmer they're going to be. And though I'm not going to touch this with my hands, this icing just being out at room temperature is going to keep this from setting. So y'all give me just a second here. I'm going to move this and we're going to move to something else. And I'll just be away from the camera for a second here. Maybe longer than a second, but um, this sits back over here. This particular cake, this is heavy. Um, you have to hold it from the bottom because this base will come out. But you see how big that cake is? It's a big cake. So, um, if y'all are wondering about the cake pins that I use, these are Fat daddy -O. They're three inches. This is an eight-inch cake. This is three inches tall. They make them, they make them up to five, I think five inches, so they make really deep ones. When you're cooking a cake like that that's deep, you need to reduce your um, baking temp. You want to bake it at 325 and not 350 because if you bake it at 350, the bottom and the sides are going to get dark before the cake is done in the middle. So I usually start my timer out at 25 minutes and that is not even going to be close to being done. But I just got to gauge it like that and then I cooked it. These particular cakes, I cooked them another 12 minutes, checked them, then I cooked them another five and I think I cooked them two more minutes. So what is that? 25, 35, 37, um, 42. About 44, 45 minutes is how long it takes to cook these. Now, if, the, if it's more batter in the pan, then it's gonna take longer. But this was a two recipe that I used and divided between three pans. So this is what I used uh, to color my cake batter. Uh, this is Americolor. Uh, if you go to Hobby Lobby or Michael's, I don't think I have a little one in here. There, there's one. These are the size you get, which is 0.7 tenths of an ounce, 20 grams. You can order these off of Amazon. And this is a, I think it's four ounces. It's a four, 4 4.56 ounces. If you're a serious baker, you need some bigger uh, containers of your um, gel paste. And I even have one that's a really big one. It's like a, I don't know, it's like almost like a, between a pint and a quart. Um, so uh, just depending on what your baking needs are is what you'll, what you'll need. 
This is Sunny Side Up. This is a brand that Hobby Lobby carries, and the Merrick Color is a is a name brand, and it's one that you can get in several different places. Um, okay, so um, y'all see me use the petal dust or luster dust. They call it different things, but um, I'm going to show you these because we're going to going to. These are my food tweezers. I have all kinds of little tools that I use. Um, to, to do my, my decorating. That's a, you can tell that's a really light pale pink, which I'm not using that on this cake. But, um, so what I did, I wanted to do some shards on the side of this cake. So, um, I did, um, I melted some chocolate. You can actually use the coating bark if you want to. If you want, if you don't, you can use, these are uh, Ghirardelli, these are uh, uh, Melton Wafers. It's in the same aisle in the store as uh, chocolate chips and things like that, but these are specifically for melting uh, and dipping things in, uh, this is white chocolate. And so I use one of, I use one of those and then I use one of the uh, almond bark. So, you probably don't know where my vision is going with this, but this is the uh, the chocolate that I did, and you can tell that it's you know it's hardened. It takes it just a minute to harden, maybe longer than a minute. I set it in the utility room where I have a when the air conditioner going. I'm going to use my bent scraper to cut this, and um, I use some of the. Some of the dust on top of this, actually I use this, is what I use. This is edible glitter spray, and you can get this at Walmart. This is a Wilton brand. You can get it at Walmart. It has a pump, or you can take it out and just put some in your hand, or you can use this brush, or a, a brush that you use in your baking. And this looks like a makeup brush, but uh, Wilton has a, I don't think this is Wilton, but Wilton has a set of actual brushes. And if you just uh, dump some off on here, then you can, you can just take it and fling it like that. And then the, the uh, there's still some in it, you can tell. Uh, then it will kind of, it'll kind of be like, you see chefs when they're uh, putting seasoning on the steak, they'll hold it up so it, it distributes evenly. That's kind of how you want to do this. Uh, if you spray it, you may get one big blob in one place. So uh, I like to take it out, either using the brush or either put it in my hand and do that. Um, I hope that this is not bothering y'all from supper. And I realize it's a different time. Usually we do our live videos in the morning and we have so many people tell us for different reasons they can't watch us live. So when we give away a gift, um, they're not in on the drawing because they're not watching the slide because they're at work or they're at the doctor's office or some other appointment that they've got. So I just thought it would be fun to do a giveaway this evening while I'm doing this. And I'll tell you what I'm going to give away. And I've got it right here. I'm going to give away a bit scraper set. And this is the bit scraper. You will use this for so many things. So many things. I'm going to show you how I'm going to use it today. And, it, and then this is the bowl scraper that comes with it. Now, if you order this, it doesn't. this doesn't come in the box. But for shipping, I put this down in the box. So you're just going to get one. When you take it out, this will be in there. So um, Mary or Carla won. I, I think one of them is going to pick a name. So um, y'all make sure that you're commenting because uh, they're going to pick a name from, uh, from the comments. And we will need your address. Uh, Texted to our business phone if you're the winner at 903-235-4804 uh, We're only going to give 24 hours to get the address because after then it's hard for us to go back and find that um, Find what we're looking for and hopefully if your name is called you'll you will be able to get the address to us right away So we can get mail to you. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is a uh, this is not super, super thin, but it's pretty thin. And this was a whole package here of, um, of coating. Um, I've got another color over there that 
is this package, and this is a 10 ounce package, but this here was a 16 ounce package, so it's more. So I'm not gonna do any rhyme or reason. I know the shards that I want, so I'm just gonna do some pieces. I'm just gonna do some random cuts, and I'll put them over here so you can see. Um, I want some triangles, and this should just cut right through here, yeah, it did. Okay. This is a big one here, and that's too big, but I'm going to take this out just so I can get started. And this is really good to eat, too. So, um, okay, it'll it'll crack by itself, or, or the bit scraper is what, what I'm using to cut it with, but it will crack by itself if you... If you pick this up, you can pick it up and slam it down on the ground, or you can see this is something like kind of what I want. This is going to go on top of the buttercream, kind of like a like it's a tower going up into the sky. So I want several of these, and I want them all different shapes and sizes. So I'm not I'm not particular about. Um, see, this is a little bit too big, so. I want some big, I want some smaller. And again, this there's no pattern to this because I'm going to have them coming out from different angles. And if you happen to break some and you have little bitty pieces, these are good to snack on or you could, uh, I guess you could melt them again. I don't know if you could melt these again or not, but I think you can. See, this kind of looks like the side of a building where it's got those ridges in it. It's kind of kind of like um, uh, like siding on a skyscraper or something. That's, that's the effect that I'm going for. And you can see that I've got the, um, the luster dust or petal dust, whatever you want to call it, up there. See, here's a, here's a long piece. I might just use that whole piece. That's kind of cupped at the end. See, it's kind of natural looking, and that's that's what you want. You want some some pieces that are just maybe maybe cut, and some of them you want that are jagged, that are not necessarily um, um, cut in a, you know, like in a straight line or something. So... And I'm, going, I'm just going to go ahead and cut all this because it's like flowers when you're doing a flower arrangement. And y'all know I'm not no expert at that. But um, you're going to use more than you think you're going to use. I'm just going to go ahead and do it all. And I think I may save that big piece there too. I wanted some that kind of look like a triangle. It's almost like you're uh, cutting pieces to a puzzle. And I won't get this whole cake decorated while I'm on air, but I'm going to I'm going to do enough that you're going to be able to see uh, what I'm doing and the direction that I'm going in. See, that's kind of a kind of another big piece. These are just little pieces. Maybe some of this to go on top, just to kind of sprinkle on top. Well, that's a that's a different one. That almost looks like a house, doesn't it? Except these little shards here. I'll just put these over here. I may use them and I may not, but those are little pieces. Those, those are little snack pieces. So this here, I, I really meant it to be more red than it is pink. I didn't quite put enough um, red in it, but I, I think I am going to use some of it because I've got the blue mustard dust in it. So, you can just kind of see. I 
think I think Braden won't mind these colors. They're just they're just kind of different. You don't want thick pieces. You want this um, poured out. You want it in a big pan, in a parchment lined pan, and you want it um, big enough to where, depending on how many ounces you're using, to where it'll spread out to be pretty thin. It's kind of like um, almond bark or peppermint bark. It's kind of what this is, except it doesn't have peppermint on it. If you're doing something that you want to do some really dark colors in, like blacks or maroons or a deep red, um, you can get these bought icings at the store. I'm not big on buying any kind of bought icing. I'd rather make my own. But like fondant, if you just need a little bit and you don't want to have to uh, mixed colors because black is an intense color and so is red. It's hard to get that uh, color, the, uh, the the deep rich color that you want. Um, it's not a shame to buy something like this to use that color to just when you just need a little touches here and there. Um, I happened to buy this on clearance. It's it's not out of date, but it was on clearance the other day and I picked it up because I knew it was some colors that I would use. So. Um, just FYI, sometimes it's just, these are made in the USA, sometimes it's just better to just buy something to add to your homemade cake uh, versus having to mix up and keep missing, mixing. And those of you who've never done this, or maybe those of you who have know what I'm talking about, when you want black or red, just like this um, bark here, you have to use a lot of color. Uh, when you're trying to get something white, you have to use a lot of the color gel. So what does that do? That changes the consistency of your buttercream. And you, once you get enough coloring in it, it's not, it's too thin to use as buttercream. So then you've got to add more powdered sugar to it than the color lighting. So sometimes it's just easier to go the easy route. Uh, if you're just needing something for, um, you know just a small amount and you don't need like a half a gallon or two quarts of buttercream just little things that you're going to do some uh just some color accents with then uh i don't know why i keep feeling like i'm sliding on something i guess it's these shoes um just buy it just buy it and use that okay so um let me get my cake back in here and move this over And another thing, when you're putting something on a buttercream cake, once we did, we've done the crumb coat, once you get this next level of icing on here and you're going to put something on that cake, if you want it to stick, it has to go on there before that uh, frosting sets. So remember that also. When you touch this, see it's already set. That um, buttercream sets real fast, and um, it's uh, that's because it doesn't have any cagro or anything in it that's going to keep it from setting. Now you can you can use your big one if you have a big one. You can use it. Or you can use the little one. I like the feel of the little one, but um, for a big cake, sometimes it's nice to, to have a big one. So, I'm 
we got to get this on the side quick because in order to get that, I think I'm going to work in one space at a time. Yeah, I've got to switch to my little one. I like the feel of this little one. You just, you just kind of know where you're going with it a little bit better than if you're using the big one, or at least for me, it, for me I do. Okay, so we're going to start we're going to start with this side right here and I'll turn it around as I work on it. Um, it's my, it looks like my cake is kind of leaning a little bit and I don't know why that's happening. Maybe it's because that top is the icing's not straight on it. Okay, so what I'm going to start doing, I'm just going to start building some layers with this. And again, there's no rhyme or reason how I'm doing this. I'm just, um, I'm just kind of filling in. It's kind of like you were doing stained glass or like a, a mosaic piece or something. You're just kind of going to kind of just use your imagination to uh, put this wherever you want to put it. kind of wanted it to be a little funky because um, Graydon is a super cool kid and he kind of marches to the beat of his own drum so I kind of wanted it, this to kind of reflect his personality and just do something completely off the wall and different. And it'll be good too because this um, um, chocolate is really good. And I want it to be above the top of the cake. So, and I don't want it to be even. Some of it's going to be higher than others. Um, to the point that I need to put some more buttercream on here. So if you see gaps in the, in here, I'm doing this on purpose because I want it to kind of look like there's gaps in between it. Um, you know, when you start thinking about a cake that you're going to make, you, I don't know if everybody does like I do or not, but you look at uh, pictures, and um, he loves Legos, and he loves um, the um, action figures. You know the I don't know what they what they all are. Honestly, I was lost when I started looking for this stuff. But there's a lot of action figures that have have these towers coming up in them, and um, I just thought that it was something that was. That would be really, really cool to do something like this. So I'm going to put some more buttercream on this side. And I'm not going to have this completely put together until I get over a uh, little into tomorrow. And uh, we'll be live at 11. And for those of you who didn't know, I did create an event so get your make sure your notifications are on uh, and you should see that we have an event created 
So we're going to be on at 11 instead of 10 at her house. So um, if you want to watch us, set your timer or turn your notifications on or however you want to do it to make sure that you don't miss us. If you want to watch the live. And you can always watch it on replay. Okay. Let's see here. I'm kind of saving these big pieces for something else that I've got in mind. This cake is not going to have a border on it because um, I love borders on cakes. And um, I... I don't even like to make it a cake without a border, but um, because this one is a little bit different, I'm not putting a border on it. I love the shiny on the, it almost looks like it's clouds coming up out of the, uh, Whoops, I got one that came off. Let's see where that was at. If I can get it back home there. And um, cakes are like everything else. Unless they completely fall apart, you can usually fix them. If there's a problem with it, you just, when you're setting up a cake and going to taking it to a venue, you always make sure, and, and I'm, I know that all you serious bakers already know this, but for some of you that might not be that experienced, if you're taking a cake to a birthday party or an event or a reunion or whatever, and, and it's decorated, and you want to make sure that it looks like you want it to look when you take it out of the box and serve it. Collapsible boxes are wonderful. If you don't have a collapsible box to put them in, my cake boxes are. But um, if you don't have those, uh, Walmart has those big shipping boxes. And we've used those for big cakes before. Take you a, a box cutter. And when you get to the venue, cut the box open and on two sides and bring the flap down and slide the cake out and put it on your cake stand. Now, um, every box, every cake that we've ever delivered that was in one of those boxes, we always explain to them, this is how you get it out. Don't try to lift it up because you're going to mess the cake up. So cut your sides down, turn the flap over and pull it out. And with the collapsible box, you just undo the little work hooks in and then your cake box is completely open. And uh, it makes a, it makes it much easier to uh, to get your cake out when it's uh, when you have a a box or when you know how to get into the box. And we we always explain that we have we have <laughs> delivered cakes in thunderstorms. Mike and I took a cake. Um, it's either an anniversary or birthday. I think it was a birthday. And it was about, it wasn't far from here. I think it was about 35 miles from here. But it was down a secondary road off of the main highway. And it was just about to come to storm. And oh my goodness, I hate delivering cakes when it's bad weather. We got it out. The caterers were there and they were setting up. And... We got it out, and Mike got it out and got it in, and we went ahead and took it out of the box because we were there early enough that we could take it out and set it on the cake stand. Another thing that, um, that a lot of people don't account for when you get a cake stand, because some people either they'll go to Hobby Lobby and buy one, or they'll buy one off the internet, or maybe they buy one you know, at the Goodwill. I've used cake stands from the Goodwill or from Hope's Closet or something. You want to make sure that your cake stand is not wobbly and that it's going to hold the cake. Because my cakes in particular are heavy cakes because they're big. And uh, they had one of the little, it was a beautiful cake stand. And I've seen them lots of times. Um, it was, I think it's like a copper gold. 
and then it had the little thing at the bottom to where you know it kind of come out to set to set it on but you could touch it without anything on it and it was shaky and when we took it out I said that that is not going to hold this cake and I I will not put it on there because the, it will fall so she just has to set it down on the table but keep that in mind if you've ordered a cake from someone or if you're making a cake and taking it um, make sure that if you're not setting it on a flat table surface uh, that the cake stand that you have is sturdy enough to hold your cake and the other thing is um, if um, if you have it on a cake board and this has happened to me before too they would call and they would order uh, an eight inch square cake well an eight inch square cake the cake itself is eight inches but the cake board has to be bigger so you get to deliver it somewhere and they're expecting that cake to fit right on that eight inch and it doesn't because you have to take into account for the cake board so um, if you're if you're new to this or you're contemplating doing a cake business or something uh, make sure that um, that when someone orders one that they know that so uh, they have the right size cake stand when I first um, when I first started doing cakes, I mean, I was just I wanted every kind of gadget that you could get. I just wanted a lot of different things to um, to have, so I could have you know tools, every kind of tools you can think of. Well, I can tell you that most of them you don't need. You can, you can do things with something in your silverware drawer um, that a tool that you, that you bought would do. Now, there are some things that are very important to have. You need good offset spatulas. You need something to decorate your cake on. You need good cake pans. I use um, parchment circles and the sides parchment to go on my cakes. And I would definitely recommend using those because it does make your cake have a prettier finish on it. You don't have to worry about brushing off a bunch of crumbs because uh, when you use the sides, there's there's just basically no crumbs at all. When, you, when I'm talking about sides, the rounds that go around the edge of your cake pan, you can buy them in strips or you can... You can buy uh, big oblong uh, rectangular sheets and cut your own, but I like to buy them in the size I have, oh my goodness, I have about every size you can think of all the way up to 14 inches because they, the contour fits the pan easy. If you get one that's not the right size, you're going to have to cut it two or three times to make it stay on the, um, stay in the pan. Okay, so I've got, it looks like I've got some that's fallen off, so, and, and what I was saying earlier, and that I, I got sidetracked and I didn't finish saying what I was saying, if you're taking a cake somewhere and setting it up, you need to take you a little box, uh, you can use, it um, doesn't have to be a Wilton or a name brand box, but you need a box with, you need some, um, some buttercream, you need a piping bag, um, you need some scissors, you need a spatula, uh, paper towels, you need anything that you need to do to touch up that cake, you need to be prepared uh, to touch it up. So uh, if you made special decorations to go on it, like uh, when we did Mindy's cake, Mary's granddaughter's cake, uh, I made the fondant orchids and I had them wrapped in bubble wrap, individually wrapped and they have to be, you know, in a, packed in a very safe spot in your car so something doesn't get put on top of them. So um, you also need to take that into consideration too. They have your little emergency cake kit, kit uh, ready so, um, so you can uh, fix any mishaps that might have occurred um, en route. I think I'm gonna take this one off. This is excellent glue. Edible. <laughs> okay. 
that's kind of where I wanted that piece. I wanted something really big coming out of it. Now, I'm not going to refrigerate this cake tonight. I'm going to uh, leave it in there. I'm not going to cover it. Put it in the utility room. Have a chest freezer that serves as I cool a bunch of stuff on it and put cakes and stuff on it or when I'm making candy or something that's what I use to set my stuff on the cool is my chest freezer. I had thought about getting me an upright freezer which would be so much easier when you're trying to find something but I would miss that chest freezer so bad because I'm constantly using it for something. Okay so um, the plan is when I get over there um, I'm going to put this in a box and I'll take this and then I will show y'all the Lego. Y'all may wonder how, how in the world I'm calling this a Lego cut cake. Uh, this is going to go on top of a Lego board and I'll show y'all in a minute. Um, and then I've got um, an action figure that I'm going to, I don't know yet what I'm going to use, but um, I'm going to put this somewhere on the cake to where it looks like it's coming out of the cake and I won't do that until tomorrow but um, and then it's going to be on a Lego board so it's kind of between a Lego a theme and uh, the uh, what are they called I don't know what they called action figures um, uh, I know the names are DC or the brands I'm not even sure what I'm even talking about y'all are probably laughing at me especially with little with grandkids, y'all probably know more about it than I do, but um, I don't think it turned out too bad, and I will have some more stuff, and of course we'll put some candles on it, and the, the action figure, and I'll show you, if I can get this in here without it breaking, I've never put a cake on a Lego board before. I didn't even know they had a Lego board. But um, I've got this little, let me move this over just to, whoops, I'll fix it. I've got this little thin ply board that I'm going to have Mike to glue under this. And so it'll be, it'll be sturdy. And then the cake is going to go in the center. And, um, and then we're going to put these other little things around it, the little Legos around it. So it's it's going to be different. It's going to be definitely going to be some, a cake that, something that I've never done before. But, uh, because Braden likes a lot of different stuff like this, I just thought it would be something that, uh, he would like and at least i hope he will and he may he may not but but i think he will i think he'll like it so i know i've probably been on way too long but um i just wanted to just do this um so y'all could kind of see how i do my stuff and i never hardly ever do a cake the same i've never done one like this but um i wanted to try it so Thank y'all for watching, Mary. Um, uh, do we have a winner? And if we do, um, would you would you say? I think you're signed in on Pinky Malls. Would you um, tell who the winner is, or maybe we need to get back on and do it um, after we get off of here? I really want to thank all y'all for watching. Um, we are, you know, we deal with. Um, we're constantly dealing with people, um, you know, that put our videos on other sites. We don't mind you sharing our videos. We don't like the people that take them and put them, create another Pinky Mouse page and act like they're us. That's, to us, that's um, not right. And so we hope that y'all will watch us on this page, which is the real page. Um, and we really appreciate it. And we, we appreciate y'all uh, always loving and supporting us. And uh, thank you again, and I'm going to see if I can tell if uh, Mary has announced a winner or if we need to get back on here and uh, tell y'all who won. So I'll talk to her when I get off the phone, and I will 
Um, I'm not sure what she means when she said that's not working. I don't know if um, what she means on that, but anyway. Um, if Mary didn't say the winner, I'll come back home and tell you who won. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, God bless. And we'll see y'all tomorrow at 11 o'clock Central Time. Uh, be sure to be watching us. Thank you. Bye-bye.